saved from depression and suicide. This is my Jesus testimony of how Jesus came in and saved my life. Before I begin, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you haven't already clicked that notification button, go ahead and do so to get notified every time I release a new video. So I remember a very dark time in my life. I was suffering for, from depression for six long years and i remember it was the longest six years of my life the darkest six years of my life the most miserable six years of my life and definitely the most lonely six years of my life and i remember i couldn't stop the mind chatter my mind was just going from one negative thought to another to another you're lonely you're miserable you're depressed and i just couldn't stop that mind chatter and it was making me so miserable and i hated it i hated it to the point that i wanted to die depression makes you feel alone it makes you feel sad and miserable Depression makes you feel that you're not good enough. You're always the outsider and it makes you feel very, very lost as it uh, made me. I remember I couldn't eat. I couldn't smile. I couldn't do any activities. Uh, I could barely scrape myself off the, off the bed in the morning. I couldn't think. And basically what was happening is I was living inside a hell of my own mind. So everything was happening in my own mind. It wasn't happening outside of me. It was happening in my head. The effects of what was happening in my head showed up on my body when I was very sluggish. It showed up in my life, in my external world, in my results. But everything was taking place in my head. It was all in my, in my mind. And I... I wanted to take my own life because I just couldn't stop that mind chatter day after day after day after minute after second it was just continuous and I remember one day when I was at the lowest point of my life I mean I've been to very uh, quite a few low points in my life but I remember this one specific day I was at the lowest point of my life and I had just had enough and I could not see any other way out. And so the only thing I could see was suicide. And so what I did is I took a bottle of alcohol, handfuls of uh, uh, pills, a variety of different pills. I don't even know what pills were there. And I made a cocktail out of it. And I began to sip it with the intention that I want to die and I began to sip it and I remember my eyes just became so tearful and I'm sipping this cocktail of alcohol and medication and my eyes are just tearing it's just out all the way dripping down onto the table because I was sitting at a table by myself and I'm sipping it and my eyes are tearing and I continue sipping and I'm just feeling a sense of aloneness that I've never felt in my life it was an intense intense alone and I'm still sipping and as I'm sipping and as my eyes are tearing I'm praying to God and I'm saying God help me God help me and I'm still sipping and I'm still saying God help me God help me God help me I don't know what I was asking him to help me from save me from but just God help me that just came to me and then the next thing that happened was a complete blackout the next thing I remember I was waking up in hospital and I'm just feeling so and so drained and so depressed and everything it was even worse and the doctor said to me you are lucky to be alive if it was anybody else apart from you they would be dead right now you're lucky to be alive and I'm thinking well I'm not lucky because I don't want to uh, be alive but then as I'm lying in that hospital bed, I, I started thinking to myself, why am I alive? Why am I still alive? Why am I still alive after being homeless and putting myself in so many dangerous situations on the streets? Why am I still alive after all these drugs I've taken? Because I was hooked on illegal substances. Why am I still alive after that? Why am I still alive after this uh, suicide attempt? Why am I alive? And then the vision, it was like, I'm not sure if it was a vision or if it was a sense of knowing. It was, it was a vision of Jesus. And it was a sense of knowing. 
God is keeping you alive. You have a mission. You have a purpose. You were born for a purpose. God is, you have work to do. You have important work to do. People need you. It's not your time. It's not your time to leave. And there's this, these words really got into me. They really got into my mind. They really got into my heart. It's like they, they penetrated me. It's not your time. God is keeping you alive. You have a mission. You have a purpose. And so I want to say this to you. God knows exactly. God knows exactly what is in your heart. God knows exactly what is in your mind. God knows exactly how much you are suffering to the level you are suffering. God knows all of this, but he will not intervene in your life until you tell him to intervene. Like I did, I said, God help me as I'm sitting on that table with the cocktail of uh, medication and alcohol and the tears are running from my face. I said, God help me, God help me. So God knows the suffering you are going through, but he won't intervene until you tell him to intervene, like I did. And so in my specific case, after seeking God, after telling him to help me, after seeking God, God day by day started making changes to my mind. I began to think less about depression, less about suicide and more about well, why am I here? Well, what could I do instead? After seeking God, God started changing my ways as in the sense of staying away from the things that were making me depressed and starting start doing new things that were not depressive, things that w would make me feel good, would make me feel different. Staying away from depressive people and... Uh, Putting myself around people that weren't depressive, staying away from depressive substances that substances such as drugs and alcohol. When you wake up the next day, you feel hangover, you feel depressed, you feel this, that, and the other. Staying away from that and start introducing myself to new things. You see, after I started seeking God, He started making changes to my mind. He started changing, uh, making changes within my heart. He started making changes to my intentions. I would no longer. Uh, go to sleep and wake up the, f the following morning thinking well uh, how depressed am I well let me grab that alcohol bottle my intentions were different I would wake up in the next morning and I would and I would think how can I feed myself better today how can I feed myself instead of drink how could I feed myself instead of take medication or do drugs how can I how, how can I go out and be productive? How can I go out and do some form of activity, whether it's walking or running or whatever it is, as opposed to sit, sitting here and feeling depressed and, and hating the world and hating everything and hating my life. And so, but all this happened after I sought God. You see, God knows your suffering. He knows what's in your heart. He knows what's in your mind, but he won't intervene because God gives you free will. It was my free will that kept me in that lifestyle. It was my free will that kept me in my suicide, in, in suicidal thoughts, in alcohol, in drugs, in homelessness, in hospitalization, and so on and so forth. I chose to be there. The second I, I chose to do different and said, God, help me. You know, I don't want to die. I want to live. Help me change. Help me do something different. Then God intervened and started making changes. And I just want to tell you, if God did it for me, he can and he will do it for you too. And the good thing is, the spectacular thing is, God will come and meet you right where you are. God will come and meet you right where you are. If you're homeless, he's going to come and meet you there. If you're in suicidal thoughts, he's going to come and meet you there. If you're an alcoholic, he's going to come and meet you there. If you're in a miserable marriage, he will come and meet you where you are. You don't have to say, well, let me change before I go to see God. Well, let me get out of these suicidal thoughts before I see God. Well, let me fix my life before I, I, I go to see God. No, no, who said that? God will come and find you right where you are. All you need to do is seek him, turn to him, pray to him. 
Seek him with your heart. The Bible says, God says in the Bible, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. With all your heart. And he will come and meet you right where you are. And when he comes, when he comes, when he comes, He will show you a new path. When he comes, he will show you a new path. And then you decide if you will take that path or stay on your current path. When he comes, he will show you a new door. And then you decide if you will walk through that door or stay in your current door. When he comes, he will show you new ways. And then you decide if you will apply those new ways or if you will continue with your old ways. You see, God will come when you seek him, he will come. But it requires a two-way relationship. It's a cooperation, it's a collaboration. He will come and he will show you. But then you have to walk that path. He will walk with you. He will hold your hand through it. He will protect you through it. But you have to walk it. You have to walk that path. God will not walk it for you. But he will be right there holding your hand and guiding you and protecting you. And when you're tired, he will lift you up. But you have to walk that path. The Bible says in Isaiah 43, 2, when you pass through waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not get burnt. Let me translate that. What is God saying here? He says, when you pass through waters, the waters and the rivers and the fires represent troubles and obstacles and dangers in life. So he says, when you pass through the waters, in other words, God is saying, you will pass through waters. You will pass through trouble. Don't believe these new age teachings and these personal development things and these books that say, you know, do this and your life will be perfect. No, that's unrealistic. Life has troubles. Life will always have troubles. But what God is saying here, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. As opposed to walking alone. He says, when you pass through the rivers, the waters will not sweep over you. He says, when you walk through the fire, through the danger, you won't get burned. You see, you will walk through trouble, but God will be with you so you won't get burned. Your troubles won't sweep over you. They won't drown you because God will be with you. It's very important that you understand this. Pray and faith. God, God always shows the ways. It's us which choose the path. Yes, Donna, that's absolutely true. And so it's a very important verse, this Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through the waters, God says, I will be with you. When you walk past through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. You will just walk through it. When you walk through the fire, you will not get burned, God says. And so pray, seek God, pray, let him walk with you. Let him hold your hand through the troubles. There will be troubles and he's telling us there will be. Let God hold your hand through the troubles, through the difficulty. So the waters won't sweep over you. So you won't get burned. So you won't drown. So you can, God can get you through to the other side. And I promise you, I promise you, when you get through to the other side, you will receive God's blessing. When you get through to the other side, you will never go back there again. When you get through to the other side, 
there is no going back to that depression those suicidal thoughts whatever your problem is you know why because you will be on a whole new level you will be on a whole new path you will be in a whole new place in your life you will be in a whole new door a whole new reality a whole new reality mentally emotionally physically spiritually so there will be no going back but what's the key seek god just like i did nothing changed in my life until i saw god if i could have done it by myself believe me i would have done it ages ago but i couldn't and it wasn't until i saw god where everything changed seek god and pray and god will come in and he will show you two paths the path you're currently on and you get a choice you can choose that or a new path and you get a choice you can choose that these two paths lead in completely different directions and the choice is always up to you why because god has given you free will everything happening in your life is a free will you can choose to pray and change with that being said whew, that was quite a testimony with that being said Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click that notification button to get notified every time I release a new video. And make sure to head over to the description section below there because I have multiple links there for you. Links to my book, Success in the Subconscious Mind, which made bestsellers. If you haven't already purchased that, go ahead and do so. Links to my newsletter, my free, free newsletter to get updates from me every day or every other day. And many more links which I have in the description. So head over there and I guess I will see you tomorrow.